I always wanted to go fast. It's fast. It's fast. I love speed. The speed, the adrenaline. Luge is fast. It's a huge adrenaline rush and it brings me back every time. It's so fast that like you just can't think. And then your your brain just like liquidizes and you're just like, oh what's happening? Hello, my name is Dominique Speedy, and I will be telling you about the sport of luge. Let me ask you something. How nervous do you get driving down a highway at 90 miles per hour, protected by steel, airbags, and anti-lock brakes? Yeah, pretty nervous. Now, think of this question. Can we remove all protective me mechanisms, get close enough to kiss the pavement and lie down so we can't see real well? Replace pavement with ice, and you've got yourself the makings of a luge team. An Olympic luge, the slider lies down on her back on a fiberglass sled with no braking system and heads feet first down an icy track going 90 miles per hour. There are two types of luge, natural track and artificial track. Natural track luge is made of packed snow and ice. The slope is no greater than 1.5%, meaning for every 100 feet of track, the maximum elevation change is 1.5 feet. The speed of this track can reach up to 50 miles per hour. In an artificial track luge, the track is steeper, which means faster and has high bank turns. The average slope is 8 to 11 percent and you can reach a speed of 90 miles per hour. A typical luge course is one mile long and drops about 300 to 400 feet in the course of a one minute run. The configuration includes straightways, left and right turns, downhills, sometimes short uphills, and at least one S-type curve combination. Since every loose track is different from every other loose track, there are no world or Olympic records. There are only track records. A luge sled is made primarily of fiberglass and steel and is custom built for each athlete based on his or her height. Luge teams usually contact companies to design and build their sleds. The sled weighs between 50 and 60 pounds and runs from the slider's shoulders to his or her knees, which means there is no head support. The sled consists of two steels. The steels are the only part of the sled that contacts the ice. They are made of metal. Two bridges. They connect to the runners and support the pod. They are made out of steel. Two runners, usually made of fiberglass and are the main steering part of the sled. The bow, which is the curved section, is flexible. The sliders use their legs and apply pressure to one or the other runner bow in order to steer through the course. Also, sliders can steer by moving their shoulders to change their weight on the board. The racing pod. The pod is where the slider lies. Two grips. There is a handle on both sides of the pod so the slider can hold on to it during the race. The racing gear consists of helmet. A luge helmet has a rounded visor that extends all the way under the slider's chin to, mi to minimize air resistance. The racing suit is a smooth rubberized skin tight suit designed to minimize air friction. Spike gloves are used at the start of the race. They provide traction when the slider is paddling over the ice. The gloves have spikes sewn into the fingerprints and knuckles. The racing booties, the zippers on the luge booties, draw the slider's feet into a straight position. Go. Olympic rules. Since weight is an advantage, male athletes must weigh at least 198 pounds and women 165 pounds. If a slider weighs less, they can attach extra weights to themselves to make up for the difference. Single sleds must weigh no more than 50.6 pounds. The sleds can have no mechanical brakes and the steels on the sled cannot be heated. For the luge course, there are two handles, one on each side of the track. The slider grabs these handles and rocks back and forth to build momentum for the start. Then to begin the race, 
This is where the spike gloves come in. The slider gets onto the course and uses his gloves and paddles through the first 10 feet or so. This helps him gain speed before lying down on the sled. From there on, he is prone to this position with his head lifted only enough to have an idea of where he is going. A slider cannot cross the finish line without her or his sled. Olympic luge is timed to the thousandths of a second. Luge is timed using photoelectric sensors from start to finish. Now let's talk about the physics. Force and inertia are used greatly at the start of the course. Gravity, the force of gravity, pulls the slider and sled down the track. Friction, the amount of friction between the sled and track works against gravity and is prime determining factor in speed. The slider lies down on the sled and lets gravity take over. In the sport luge, higher weight means greater speed. Therefore, the greater the weight of an athlete, the greater the force of gravity pulling her down on the track. Probably the hardest part of luge are the turns, especially turn combinations when g-forces increase. Acceleration and deceleration throughout a luge course puts an average force of the 3 g's on a slider's body. In turns, forces can get as high as 5 g's when centrifugal force adds another dimension to the <laughs> forces acting on the slider. Centrifugal force pulls the slider outward into the turn. To, to maintain speed, the slider must perfectly balance the centrifugal force with the force of gravity, which is pulling him downward through the course. Olympian Aaron Hamlin is a slider in the sport luge. In the recent Olympics, Aaron brought home a bronze with a total time of 2 minutes 30 seconds, 0.797. USA Olympian Kate Hansen finished in 10th place with a time of 2 minutes 32 seconds, 0.168. USA Olympian Christopher Mazder Finished in 13th in the men's singles luge, he finished with a time of 2 minutes 37 seconds, 0.628. USA Olympian Tucker West finished 20th with a time of 2 minutes 38 seconds, 0.521.